Do Asian men have to make a lot of money in order to live a happy life in America? This is what we're discussing today. Yeah, we got to talk about a viral thread where there were so many different reactions, valid points on all sides. Joining us to discuss today is Ronnie Chang's favorite up and coming Asian American comedian in the entire world. Vic Tran. Hey, what's up? I'm Vic Tran. I'm Ronnie Chang's number one favorite comedian in the world. It was on the list, bro. Yeah, and it's 100% true. I, uh, yeah, I'm half Vietnamese, half Filipino. I'm a comedian, and I'm broke, so I'm ready to talk about wealth. All right. <laughs> we brought in a lot of people with a lot of different perspectives. Andrew, the first internet comment was that Asians in general, and I find that Asian guys are just way too fixated on wealth creation. Is this true? This is kind of a stereotype. Yeah, but I feel like uh, and maybe it's being in New York, like which is a big city where everybody who moves here or lives here is, is trying to be successful in some way. It's like you can get around a bunch of Asian guys and everybody's like, yo, yo, what are you doing uh, for this investment or real estate or you want to do this or you're, oh, you're flipping that, blah, blah, blah. But then no one really asks each other like, hey, how do you live a happy life? Are we living happy lives, guys? Like, well, what's going on? Yeah, I would agree that it's an extreme stereotype based on like what city you're in. Obviously, people in the suburbs are probably going to be more relaxed or maybe more about saving money than making money. But I guess, Vic, do you have any unique insight? And do all Asians feel this way? Or you being, because uh, you're half Vietnamese, half Filipino, does one side care uh, or, or just value things differently? Yeah, no, I definitely think it's a spectrum. And uh, the Filipino side of my family, I think they got it right. You know, they, they're making their money, but they also have a good work-life balance and they know how to spend their money and uh, improve their quality of life. Right, and you're saying maybe on the Viet side, it's more like just wealth, 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 more wealth, or is that? Yeah, it's so intense. It's so intense. They're just focused on obtaining wealth and it's like, uh, hey, the war is over. We can right. relax, <laughs> we can chill. Um, somebody said, you know, I have a family friend who is a doctor who saved his money his whole life and he has a thousand properties when he passed away. Um, but he probably lived a very conservative life. Do you think that this is something to look up to or not? And then basically there was a lot of people debating about like, Hey man, that guy probably lived a sexless, no dopamine life. It's not worth it just to have a thousand properties. And then of course, you know, it just exploded because some people are like, what are you talking about? This guy did a great thing uh, for himself and the multi-generational children of his uh, family. How do you know he wasn't having sex, man? Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think a question is just like, you know, I think it's different for everybody. Like what makes him click and what was that thing that made him want to, to build that much wealth and to keep going is clearly he felt good about it. Right. It might not look the same, right? It may not be parties and and hanging out with the family and all these warm moments holding a puppy maybe you didn't hold a puppy very long but you know i mean yeah different people are different right? i guess is it possible yeah. that that accumulation of assets made him happy i don't think the accumulation of it made him happy but the process of going through that you know that, that journey maybe made him happy but i don't think that's an obtainable goal for anybody else and you would look insane if you did achieve that it's like yeah i'm chinese i got a thousand properties it's like <laughs> what <laughs> People would well, people just be mad nowadays that you're pushing up all the property prices, maybe, yeah. in your Chinese. Somebody said, uh, yeah, but, you know, for me, making money is fun. But I'm also from mainland China. I cannot deny that this cultural program perhaps has an impact on my life. Mm, yeah, you mean this guy's saying that uh, I cannot deny that the pursuit of achievement and wealth is also making my life possibly stressful. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think it depends. I think some people, they're so wired to, like, love it. But it's, it's rare. Dude. Like you're saying, the Filipino way of like more balance, and this is, by the way, I'm not saying all Filipinos, but like of more balancing it is probably more sustainable for the majority of the population, right? Dude. Yeah, yeah. I think it's about sustainability and about balance. And it's like, obviously, yes, you need money and you need to achieve money, but it's like, uh, that can't be your only thing. What so about saying the what? most sustainable Asians are, are Filipinos maybe in this sense? I th yeah, I'm saying they're the most sustainable and they're the most correct. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said the main issue was the previous generation just didn't know how to enjoy the money. Do you think this is true, Andrew? Because a lot of people making assumptions about this Chinese doctor who lived a nerdy conservative life but had a thousand properties. I don't know, man. I think for a lot of Chinese people, the threshold for enjoyment is a lot lower. Like you just go out and have a nice dinner and you order like lobster noodles. Right. You don't even need a drink you at order dinner, whatever right? you yeah. want. <laughs> You're not getting drunk. You don't got a bunch of like girls around. You're just like enjoying the steam fish yeah. every day. Yeah. If you eat I steam would say fish that, every day. That's funny. The steam fish with ginger scallion. I would say that a lot of like conservative Chinese people, and there's all types of Chinese people in America nowadays. You're starting to see more of the gambler type come in. But like 
the old school ones, they're almost kind of like Mormons without the religion. <laughs> you know how like Mormons are also about like yeah. probably having a thousand properties? Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously not all, but I'm just saying. Yeah, guys, one, listen, I'm just using archetypes here. One um, property for each wife. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said being sexually desirable is more important than being wealthy. Seriously. All right. So actually I was thinking about this and um, I mean, I think in a place like America, especially if you're from a middle class or upper middle class family, let's say your family has enough money, right? So you're not, you're not like, well, even a middle middle is enough. Yeah. But, but let's just say you're not relying on your wealth to support the rest of your family and stuff like that. <laughs> then maybe at that point being more desirable and better looking and more social is going to do a lot more for your life than even an extra 300 K a year. Because yeah. if you think about it, if you don't have even the outlets to spend the money, like you were saying how maybe more Filipinos, they kind of know what to spend money on, even though maybe they're not like necessarily more rich than everybody else. But it's just like, if you don't even know where to spend your money and you don't know how it makes you happy, then really what's the point of having a lot of money, right? Yeah, I can see that for sure. I mean, I think that there's at some point in America, unless you get to like the billionaire status, no amount of extra money can really change the way people treat you like at the store, right? Yeah. Yeah, like if you're at a Chinese restaurant, like the way that you're perceived, it's like if there's some white woman at a Chinese restaurant, she's going to talk to the server the same way that she talks to the owner. There's no difference in her perception of that person. Right, right. No, I mean, for sure. I think that it depends, I think, on the space, though. Yeah, like in a restaurant context, I would definitely agree with that. Somebody says it just depends what you're suited for. A non-traditional path, a traditional path. Man, there are ways to succeed and fail in both. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think yep. that's true. I think it's depending and, on a lot of different And trust me, I'm failing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you made the list. But somebody said, it's all about your family. If you didn't have money growing up but always wanted money, your entire life will become well-centric. But if you grew up with money, maybe you are searching for meaning. Basically, what I'm saying is your impact, your upbringing has a lot of impact on your hopes, dreams, and aspirations. For sure. I mean, I think if you come from a humble background and you saw what money did for your family and even an extra like thousand dollars a year can do for your family and it has that much impact, of course, you're going to want to make more money, right? Because you understand that every like dollar counts. But yeah, when you're rich, every dollar like counts maybe less, right? Yeah, yeah, I think that the main thing about money is you want to have enough money in any situation to remove suffering. Right. Because I think that that's the main thing that makes people unhappy. What makes you happy past once all this maybe conventional suffering has been removed, that like varies person to person. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think there are other ways to relieve suffering outside of just wealth, you know? No, that's true. Yeah. Because you don't, you could be middle class and all the suffering well, is. What would removed. you say? Yeah. Is there, is there a different way that you would say to relieve suffering without wealth? Yeah. Like you just yeah. Said? yeah like alcohol. <laughs> 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 I think if Asians weren't allergic to bad, no, no. yeah, if they if they weren't allergic to alcohol, they wouldn't be so hyper fixated on wealth, you know. Dude, that's a crazy theory. Somebody we, said, <laughs> it, it, it's, no, it's a hundred percent true. Just like Ronnie's list, it's a hundred percent true. Yeah, that, that man, lists are true. <laughs> Somebody said, um, you know, it varies a lot even within a profession. For example, let's say for example, you pick the traditional Asian path and become a lawyer, but you're a public defendant. That gets paid way way less than like a corporate litigation lawyer. So basically people were saying, yeah, the Asian path of like getting a really good STEM job or like a law, law job, it still varies a lot. Like whether you're an accountant at H&R Block versus like some billionaire's accountant. And, and you know what I never understood about the whole, whole lawyer and doctor thing for Asians is like, I understand doctor because even in Asia, being a doctor is very highly regarded. But then like being a lawyer, I feel like a lot of Asian parents still don't really even understand what like lawyers do. No, they don't. They think it's just arguing. No, and they yeah. just know they just know you have to go to a lot of school to get yeah. that degree. That's it. Yeah. I think also that you wear a suit every day. You wear yeah. a suit, if you yeah. get a high degree and you wear a suit, then it's considered a noble profession. I know. I yeah. notice a lot of Asian lawyers, they more go into the reading and writing law versus like the in-court debating law, though, mm -hmm. that you see in like, you know, the shows and everything that's so dramatized. Somebody said, you know, you don't really need a life of luxury. You just need to be free from any sort of suffering or arguing or stressing mm -hmm. about money. And you can achieve that through earning a lot, spending less, or a combo of earning a lot and spending less. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm a big proponent of that. Somebody said uh, it's so sheltered and idiotic to think that somebody from a humble background should be shamed for just like stopping after they make 100K a year. Basically, they're referring to the some game, Andrew, that like corporate yappy Asian guys play where they're like, huh, bro, you only make like 80K and they kind of like, you know, put their nose up at that. Um, Andrew, have you seen that before? Yeah. 
Yeah, we know tons of people like that. I, I don't really like that attitude. I never agreed with it. Obviously, I think you want, if you have true desires in your heart and it requires more money, then you got to go figure out a way to go get that money. This is America. This is a great country to do that in. Great system, right? But yeah, I mean, no. Nah, I, yeah, I, I think, think if you only make 80, you shouldn't spend money like you make 180. But literally, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah, yeah. And also a humble... Uh, circumstance or whatever. It also depends on your surroundings and your community. Like right, you're saying, who your your reference group of comparison, right? Yeah, yeah, your reference group of comparison, and also just like where you live geographically. Like, you know, if you make a hundred, if you make a hundred k in New York, you can't live like you're spending two hundred. You can't spend two hundred k. Right. But in Texas, you can. Right. <laughs> you <know? laughs> Which is why a lot of people are moving to Texas. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It goes further. Yeah. Um, somebody said, is this all about women? Because ultimately the pursuit of women and the pursuit of wealth in America are, are kind of separated. It's not like Asia where the more wealth you get automatically, you get more women. I will say this. I think for a lot of guys feeling desired by women can make up for a lot of money. It's not, it doesn't mean everything. And I don't think everybody's life revolves around women. I'm not saying that, but I do think like you will feel better in your heart if you know that you're being desired by value pe that people by other people that you value, right? Yeah. You're saying anybody. Yeah, anybody, but I think often for I guess straight guys, it comes in the form of women, right? Right, yeah. Well, I mean, just the amount of extra money and extra hard work that I would need to become desirable to the average woman. He's like, is the average woman even worth that? <laughs> <laughs> it's I so I mean, they're worth a lot, but is it worth two hundred Seventy thousand dollars more than the average. Right, it's like, right, that's right. crazy. And maybe that's leading to the whole passport bros thing, a whole international arbitrage and everything like that. I mean, listen, guys, this thread went on and on and on. I think there were so many good arguments either way, but I think ultimately my main takeaway from this, Andrew, is that life is sort of made up of different buckets, right? And once one bucket is full, you can't like fill a bucket more than it's already full. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like yeah. it just overflows at the top and you can't hold anymore. So I I think the key is like the one thing I'll say is that not everybody's buckets are the same size. Like, you know what I mean? Like different mm -hmm. buckets of metrics in the life, like social life, wealth, family life, spirituality. Everybody has like different size buckets. But I think the key is a lot of men, not only do they not know what buckets, what size their buckets are. I don't even think they know how much volume of liquid is filling those buckets. Like, yeah. I think a lot of guys are not like analyzing their own specific unique equation that makes them happy. Yeah, no, I think a lot of guys just, they wake up and they grow up and they're just like, yo, I just have to make money because I'm like, man, right? That's what I'm like told to do and that's what everybody else is doing. But they're not actually analyzing themselves as people right. because every person is different. So I guess they're, they're either taking Instagrams like bucketology right. or they're taking the bucketology from their parents, which is the cultural programming or family programming. Right. But they're not thinking about the buckets that like, make up themselves. Like, Vic, how, how does one guy know how much money he needs to make to be happy? Like, do you ever know, or how do you how do you come about to to know? Like, you're like, I'm I'm okay here yeah. for now. I think in my case, I would like some money. <laughs> some money would be good right now. But so yeah. book Vic for more gigs, guys. If you guys are watching. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I I think uh, I I think it depends on how they search for that. If they if they just keep trying to reach like a higher and higher and higher number until they're happy, they're never gonna find it. I think they just have to remove money from the conversation and figure out what makes them happy. And then however much that costs, that's how that's their bucket. You yeah. know? Yeah. And I think one other thing is Andrew, the buckets multiply against each other. So if one bucket is super empty, that's gonna fall into the like an algebraic equation that impacts the health mm. of the other buckets too. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of when I was in sales in college and we would have all these different buckets that were like accelerator, decelerator on your like total final like algorithmic like paycheck output. Yeah. You know, and it's like that's kind of like actually how life is. Yeah. Dude, uh Vic, what I will say is though, uh Dude, stand-up comedy is one of the best business models in the world. <laughs> you literally walk on a stage, no cost. Mm -hmm. You just say some words. You can get paid some money. Yeah. It, you zero know, cost, zero business expenses. Yeah, no work, no writing, and you're, number, you're Ronnie Chang's number one comedian in the whole world. <laughs> I guess, no ultimately, what should Asian guys do? Should they be frugal, invest in assets like real estate that are very safe, or is it a changing world now? Should we all try to be crypto bros? That whole thing kind of wow. worked for a while until it exploded. I don't know. What should people do? I mean, it, it is tough because I think there's a lot of pressures when you're an Asian guy and let's say you want, you desire nice Asian women and obviously a lot of like nice Asian women there are, are going to 
prefer you to have like a certain type of job or at least a certain security. You know, I don't want to say there's a certain number and I'm not saying women are like only money centric or anything like that. I'm just saying that most women obviously want a guy who is stable in some sense. Right. So, of course, you need to reach that stability level. But I guess like, you know, for Asian guys, just kind of get to know yourself. And I wish that more Asian friends would have this conversation. And maybe it's a little Mm. taboo. Maybe it's a little embarrassing. But like. Yo, what makes you happy, bro? Yo. Like, are you feeling alive every day? What if we looked at it, we could see somebody's chest, right? And there's all these buckets on their chest. <laughs> and the buckets are different sizes and they're full at different levels. Oh, you mean different gauges? Like yeah, different yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. Sims. Beep, beep, yeah. Beep, 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 beep. Well, I mean, are humans not like Sims so like, or cyborgs, but just like the more organic? <laughs> so version? like David, I'd be like, yo, David, David, let me see your uh yeah, like, let beep, me see beep, your beep, what beep. health bucket. Let yeah. me see the look, fitness bucket. See my advanced metrics. Yeah, let me see your pussy bucket. How much pussy? <laughs> <laughs> gonna have to bleep that. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. I mean, ultimately, um, any final words on this, Vic? No, I think Andrew hit it on the head. I think you gotta you gotta figure out what works for you and uh, learn more about yourself. But I also think Asian culture can sort of uh, you know you're saying sort of it, are, we, are we a little bit like Kardashians that are always chasing that like perfect look and will just like do whatever you know what I mean like look yeah. is wealth. You oh. know, like you see, I'm not saying just women, but like, you know what I'm saying? Archetypic, like they're just doing like the most. Oh, David. Yeah, but even Kardashians know what they like. Black guys. <laughs> David, <laughs> Asians are about money as the Kardashians are about looks and gravity and, and black guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, we're just going to leave it there. It's all jokes. Um, thank you, Vic, for joining us. When we have a comedian on here, everything gets more comedic. But yeah, hopefully this conversation was helpful, you know, and just hopefully uh, you guys all learned something. And uh, there is no true answer. You just got to get to know yourself and try things out, Asian guys. Yeah, but there th- are cultural patterns, of course, and family patterns, but you have to know your own individual pattern and accept if it does deviate, even though most people are an amalgamation of everything that they've been coached to like in life. Anyway, guys, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, keep it civil in the comments. Until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace. Oh, yeah, check out Vic. Oh, yeah.